Once again, COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are increasing in Puerto Rico during the government's effort to speed up the vaccination process. Today, our Kristen Ramos brings us the whole report. COVID cases are going up rapidly here in Puerto Rico, and now the island is on the high-risk list of the CDC. We went from July 2, when we had 68 positive cases, to August 2, where we had 1,043 positive cases. Uh, if you compare July 9 with August 9, we went from 32 hospitalized patients to 296 hospitalized patients. And in ICU, we went from nine patients in ICU with COVID, these are adult patients, to 71 adult patients in ICU. According to Colón, the island is in a more difficult situation than a year ago, and with the Delta variant, achieving herd immunity will be more complicated. The threshold to achieve herd immunity went up from about 70% to 87.5%. So it's a big jump. Although 57% of the eligible population in Puerto Rico is vaccinated, there is still hesitancy on the vaccines. Only by speeding up the vaccination, the island could control the situation. Full approval will reduce the hesitancy. A lot of people believe it's experimental, and it being experimental, that is one of the reasons why they haven't uh, taken the vaccine. But once they see full FDA approval, hesitancy will be reduced. The FDA approval is key for improving the uh, overall people getting the vaccine. In terms of contagion, the primary drivers of the positives are young people from 20 to 29 years old. The task for Ciudadano is foreseeing that the cases went down in August as university and school starts. Last year, we saw that as we entered into August, we had a decrease, a slight decrease in, in transmission. I would hope that the same phenomenon this year would translate to slow down the rate of transmission, or if we're lucky, maybe even uh, reverse it. If you want more information, you can search for Task Force Ciudadano Puerto Rico on Facebook. Reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Cristian Ramos. All right, thanks, Christian. In the meantime, Guyana is only accepting vaccinated travelers at the moment. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said all travelers must have a vaccination card showing they have taken at least one dose of the vaccine. Travelers, including Guyanese returning home, must also have a negative PCR test taken 72 hours prior to traveling to the country. The health minister explained that if a traveler is not vaccinated or can't show proof of a negative PCR test, they will not be allowed to board the plane to Guyana. However, the COVID-19 task force has made exceptions for certain circumstances. If you're uh, below the ages of 18, you're not required to have a vaccination because in Guyana, we are not administering vaccines as yet to persons uh, below the ages of 18. So we have not make, made that a requirement. Another exemption would be for uh, women um, who are pregnant, must show proof of their pregnancy and then we can exempt them because there are some women who during their pregnancy uh, did not want to take the vaccine. And um, that's, that's purely uh, their choice. And once the obstetrician would have exempted them, they can present um, proof that they're pregnant and uh, they would not be required to have uh, the vaccination requirement. And Minister Anthony said citizens who have traveled abroad before the new requirements were put in place and who might have gotten their vaccine can apply to the COVID-19 task force for consideration before their travel date. And a new poll finds a fifth of American parents with children eligible for COVID-19 vaccines say they definitely won't vaccinate them. Another 23% of parents in the Kaiser Family Foundation poll say they may get their kids vaccinated later on, but not now. 88% of parents of unvaccinated kids said not enough is known about the shot's long-term effects. 79% said they're worried about immediate side effects and 73% are concerned it could impact their kids' fertility. Attitudes on vaccinated children are closely correlated with parents' own vaccination issues and statuses. 60% of vaccinated parents say their kids are also vaccinated, while just 4% are 
of unvaccinated parents got the shot for their kids. Overall, 41% of parents with children who are eligible for the vaccine have gotten it for that. Now that's up from 34% in June. And switching gears to the travel industry, it's three to one right now. One airline, United, is requiring every employee to get vaccinated. But Delta, American, and Southwest Airlines will not be implementing a COVID-19 vaccine mandate. Delta says 75% of its workforce is already vaccinated, even without a company-wide mandate. Southwest CEO says they're still strongly encouraging workers to get vaccinated. Same thing goes for American Airlines, which is also offering people an extra vacation day next year if they get vaccinated by the end of the month. And turning to some health news right now, better brain health may start on your plate. Teas, it's peak season for some fruits and vegetables that are nutrient rich and can help with stress reduction, mood and cognitive decline. Elise Preston explains. Fresh fruits and vegetables are plentiful in the summer months. Cherries, hopefully, peaches, plums. I bought some tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes. And it turns out that bounty is good for your brain. If we don't have a healthy working brain, the rest is a little irrelevant. <laughs> brain health expert Dr. Tara Lynn Sell says summer favorites like berries can help stabilize blood sugar and reduce inflammation. There's some new emerging research that ties things like sugars and inflammatory foods to the inflammation of your brain. Those people were found to have more levels of major depressive disorder. Vitamin rich leafy greens like kale, spinach and arugula can help slow cognitive decline. Hoping that it keeps me like more alert and vibrant. Dr. Sell suggests eating a veggie rainbow, including bell peppers, cauliflower, broccoli, eggplant, carrots and tomatoes. The more colors you add into your dishes, the prettier they look and the better and taste and the better you're going to look as well. Another bonus, melons like cantaloupe, honeydew and watermelon have high water content, keeping you hydrated on hot summer days. They're also rich with vitamin C and vitamin C is so important to help you fight stress. And right now, that's exactly what we need. Cell says nutrition can also be a frontline defense for mental well-being, especially during the pandemic. I think we need to broaden what we can do individually to help take control and improve our mental health. And a great place to start is how you're fueling your brain. And that could bring some peace of mind. And before we head to break, Fred has finally formed the Caribbean. The tropical storm will move over the Dominican Republic and Haiti Wednesday, bringing sustained winds of up to 40 miles an hour and could drop up to six inches of rain in some places. The storm is then expected to pass near the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas, along with Cuba. The National Hurricane Service has discontinued warnings for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Fred is expected to strengthen as it heads towards the Florida Keys this weekend, but it's still too early to tell if this storm will ultimately develop into a hurricane. Now our One Caribbean News weather team will be sure to keep you up to date on air and online at onecaribbeantelevision.com.